what I'm going to do today is go through uh, a little bit of background um, of kind of glass mechanics and glass as a structural material. Um, then I'll go through what uh, kind of I would propose a decent methodology for designing glass um, per the available uh, codes and standards in the United States. And I will then follow up with just a few uh, tools that are available to be used in helping for design of glass. And I'm going to start with glass mechanics because I do think that um, understanding the basics of glass as a material and how it works structurally is quite important for thinking through design of glass and, and how one designs. Um, so I think some of that background is important. I'm going to just start quickly with what is glass. Um, glass is a material that it's it's been around for quite some time, but it's a collection of um, uh, various um, elements that are heated um, and then cooled to create a kind of clear crystalline material. There are natural forms of glass as well as uh, what we now know as man-made um, forms of glass. And most glass that we have in buildings these days is a type of sodalime silica glass where sodium is used, is kind of inserted into the atomic structure to reduce the melting temperature of glass. Um, with this background, I would just propose that everyone keep in mind that my background is as a structural engineer. I'm not a chemical engineer. I am not a um, fracture mechanics person. I am a practicing structural engineer, um, and I'm kind of coming at this presentation from that standpoint. But you can see here just in this slide that uh, the um, kind of material of glass, if you have a purely crystalline material, it's a very um, uh, regular structure. When we start getting into silica, silica glass, it is more amorphous. And then soda lime, when we insert that, it lowers the melting temperature, lowers the melting point um, by inserting uh, sodium atoms. So production of glass, modern float glass, there, there's kind of a longer history for anyone that sat on the glass 101 um, presentation that I've given. There's a longer history that I could go through in terms of the development of glass through the history of time. But from a production standpoint, um, in what matters for us as structural engineers. The modern float, float glass production technique was developed in uh, the late 50s. Um, and this technique involves taking all the different materials that go into glass, um, heating them up, you kind of weigh them out, you heat them up until it's one big molten material. Then that material gets floated out onto a different heated material. And the, the material that it's floated on is something that is more dense than the glass, so that glass sits on top. The, the heated glass material will then come to a thickness that is based on just the density of that material that's floating on top of the lower material. It can then be kind of flattened out or thickened um, by kind of a rolling process, which you'll see down here on the bottom of the slide. Um, and then after it is floated on that, through that, uh, floating section. It's usually floated on tin. Um, it goes through uh, on rollers, a layer or a system where it cools. Um, it's then inspected, it's then cut, and there are other processing, um, other processing uh, aspects of processing that happen. But this is important. I mean, I do want to really highlight this float area section of modern float glass production where we're floating glass, molten glass on tin. So the top side of the glass uh, is just exposed to the air. The bottom side of the class is exposed to tin um, or is sitting on top of tin. And that can lead to some, some issues that I will discuss later. General sizes of glass, um, thicknesses, and, uh, thicknesses and overall sizes. Standard thicknesses, nominal thicknesses as we call them, range from about 2 to 25 millimeters. This presentation will be a mix of imperial and metric units. Many people still use metric for glass um, design and specification. So 25 millimeters being one inch, just for reference. And I would say in terms of standard sizes that you regularly see more between the four to 12 range, although you do certainly see 12 to 25 um, uh, fairly regularly. Sheet sizes, a standard sheet size, about 19 and a half feet by 10 and a half feet, but oversized sheets, particularly in the last 10 to 20 years have become more and more common. Here in the image on the lower right-hand side of the screen, you can see um, an extra large sheet that's been made, been produced in China. And if you're out and about in the world, depending on what city you're in, you see more and more um, oversized panes of glass being used in various applications. 
um, whether it's building applications on boats, et cetera. Um, one thing to note, and I will go back through this again, when glass comes straight off of the out of the float um, line, we call that annealed glass. We consider it to not have any significant residual stresses in the glass. So annealed glass would be glass that's right off of a float line. There's different ways of finishing the edges of glass, um, and these different types of edge finishes can have an input, uh, an impact on the strength of glass, similar to um, the the fact that the float procedure can have an impact on how glass behaves. Um, so just we can cut our edges, chamfer them, you can get rounded edges. This is important for architects, um, and how edges are finished is important for engineers. If it's water cut, if it's sanded, um, if it's drilled, 